In this ReTech Insights, we'll discuss the US FDA Class 1 UDI requirements and exceptions. The FDA UDI requirements have a number of tenants, four basic areas. Uh, basically, the information of, uh, that needs to be included on the label has to be expressed, uh, the UDI information has to be expressed in human readable plain text and also in something called automatic ID data capture, AIDC. So that is usually implemented as a one dimensional or two dimensional barcode. There is a requirement there for the date format as well. A subset of medical devices in the US that qualify uh, need to have the UDI permanently marked on the actual product itself. There is requirements to report device identifier. This is not the production identifier, by the way. This is just the first portion, the device identifier, and a number of attributes. So totaling 57 attributes are reported to the FDA's global UDI database, Good ID. That information is flowed over to a public database hosted by the National Library of Medicine, referred to as Access Good ID. And the fourth major area is making sure UDI is included in your um, SOPs, all the documentation, uh, recalls, tracking, all other types of uh, uh, support documents that you have for your, your medical device. As to the timing, the FDA started off with a high risk devices first, requiring implementation on, uh, on both the label and on uh, for the reporting of the good uh, data to the good ID. So class threes, uh, uh, implantables and life supporting and life sustaining are, and, and class twos are all passed. We are now looking at September of 2022 for the class one compliance date. And I do want to make a point, and this is universal in, in our discussion. There is a data flow that supports the label information, and that's uh, well established in place, so you're already labeling medical devices. UDI does need to be added uh, to that particular label, and it does need to be uh, somehow shoehorned into that particular label, and that is a problem at some point in time. The other data flow, which is on the lower row, is brand new. And this is something that has not been um, implemented in the past. So when UDI requires it, uh, you'll need to create a procedure, pathway, means to collect UDI information, build the particular messaging, send it to the regulatory bodies, in, in this particular example, the FDA, uh, so that you do meet the regulatory requirements. Here's another example of UDI being placed on a um, medical device uh, label. This happens to be the one dimensional, showing the difference of the presentation of that data and the content when you compare that to the data attributes that need to be reported. So there's a number of attributes um, categorized here by the identification of the product, the labeler, regulatory information, safety information, packaging, various characteristics of the medical device and production control uh, attributes. Uh, all of these particular attributes need to be submitted to the FDA. And this uh, does present somewhat of a challenge in collecting that information. Make sure it's uh, nice and clean and ready for submission. Since the class one compliance date has not occurred yet, uh, looking uh, next year, I thought I'd include a couple very specific notes on class one products. Uh, those manufacturers of class one medical devices, if you find that your class one product has a good manufacturing exemption, so a GMP, I'm not referring to a 510K exception. Uh, almost all class ones have the 510K exception, but uh, a few, um, roughly 15, 20% sort of thing, uh, have a good manufacturing exemption. If you find that is true, you have no UDI requirements. 
The other very broad exception is that all class one de devices only need to have the device identifier portion. So the production identifier is not required to be in the UDI. And the third major note here is that in the event you distribute your product in a retail uh, environment and make use of a UPC uh, on your particular label, then that particular UPC identifier can be used as a device identifier and, and, and serve as the UDI. No direct marking is required for those particular uh, devices in retail, uh, but you still do need to make a report to the FDA's Good ID database. Those manufacturers that have already submitted uh, their portfolio um, and have a lot of records in the FDA, a couple words about maintenance. Uh, in the event that you have a new version or model of that particular product, you do need to publish a new record to the Good ID prior to distribution. If there's a change to the label values, um, then you need to, again, submit those updates to the FDA Good ID prior to distribution. If there's an attribute that is not on the label, uh, then you have a grace period of 10 days um, after your distribution to make sure that the Good ID database is updated.